Good morning, back out today. Finally, the clouds are broken and the sun is out. Uh, we've had nothing but rain, sleet, snow, we've had everything in the last couple of days, so time to head out. So we're out in the woods today. Uh, a couple of things to do, I thought I'd break out uh, my Swedish army stove. I haven't used that for a while. And I've got a new set of boots, I just want to give them a bit of a bashing. So uh, yeah, let's see what we get up to. Let's see how waterproof these boots are, I think. As you can see, these boots come up quite high. So, what I'm going to do is just open them right out. My trousers are tucked inside. And we'll see just how waterproof these actually are. They're supposed to be 100% waterproof. I don't believe it with a leather shoe though. So these boots are supposed to be perfect for this sort of environment. I am not so sure how they're going to fare, but we'll shall see. So the only thing is with the leather boots is they take a bit more care, which isn't so much. There's a video there on the channel about looking after leather boots and what I use to keep these sort of boots healthy so there we go Lundhag forest and we're going to just go through this foggy bit here and see how we get on Yeah, I like these, I'm pretty impressed with these. Nice and dry feet so far. Right, just at the edge of the birch marsh now, so just gonna uh, get through the edge of this and then stop and have a brew, I think. impressed with these boots um, what can I say about them my feet are completely dry um, they've been right up to the up to the hilt there 
in uh, in bog and marsh for pretty much all of the walk down here today. Um, the boots, like I mentioned before, they're, they're handmade. They're, they're made in Sweden. They're made by a company called Lundhags. These are the forest boots. These are these retail at about three hundred pounds. These are so they're not the most uh, cheapest pair of boots that you can get. But these boots are going to last an absolute lifetime. So they're basically made up out of a combination of leather um, and rubber. So looking at the boot itself, let's get this undone. So as you can see, the tongue is completely attached to the shoe there. And like I said, I've literally had that completely right up to the hilt. And uh, my foot is completely, oh, I think it is, completely dry inside. Lost my sock though. So yeah, completely dry. So I'm pretty impressed with those. The only thing is, because I've got such big feet, they do look a little bit like clown boots. But, um, you know, for this sort of environment, in the marsh and in the birch and stuff like this, these are absolutely perfect. Love them. So the thing is with boots like this, is that they are going to need a lot of looking after. Um, they're going to need cleaning, they're going to need drying, and they're going to need uh, lubricating as well. Um, I've done a video a while ago about looking after le leather boots. Um, it's up on the channel there, so uh, I'll stick a link up uh, up the top there for it as well. So the stuff that I basically use is another Swedish pro product called uh, Kenska Smorin, and um, it's it's basically made out of natural products. I think it's made out of better fat is the base to it, and then there's pine tar and a bit of birch oil, I think, inside of it as well. So literally what I do with these is I'll just clean these off with a cloth when I get home with a wet cloth and uh, dry them up and then just rub some of that um, that boot cream into them just to give them a little bit of uh, lubrication. These bloody midges are doing my head in already. I didn't bring them a mozzie repellent with me today. But hey ho. Anyway, um, I'm going to get out the Swedish army cooker now and uh, I'm going to get some water on the boil. So I'll show you this little uh, cooker. I'm sure you've seen it before. There's loads of uh, videos about it, but I haven't used this for a while and I thought I'd just break this out of the bag. So here's the Swedish army cooker. Um, it's made by Sfier. Uh, a lot of people call it a Trangia, a Swedish army Trangia, but it's not actually made by Trangia at all. It's made by Sfier. Um, these were started to be made in, I think it was the, the early 1930s. Uh, they're made out of aluminium. You can get stainless steel ones as well, uh, but this one is the aluminium uh, cook set. Now I've had this 15 years, I think it is. So uh, this is absolutely bomb proof. There's no date on there. Um, of when it was actually made, so I couldn't tell you how long it's last. But this is this is uh, army surplus, so it has been used by prior to, to me getting hold of it. So if you haven't seen these, basically it comes as as a kit. So everything is inside of the pans itself. Outside you've got the windshield, which can be utilised uh, as well as as basically just like a holder if you're having a fire as well. So looking at the windshield, if you look inside the windshield here, you've got two pieces of metal that come up inside and that acts as, uh, as the pot rest inside of it as well. Like I said, you can use this to build a fire inside as well if you've got no fuel for the actual burner itself. And then basically this windshield will sit over the top of, uh, of the meths burner just here. Looking at the kit, so the lid of this is also the frying pan. And then you've got a large, larger pot there to boil as well. So like I said, this is aluminium. Um, it's uh, powder coated on, on the outside. The, the handle of the, the pan has got a couple of little loops on there 
that you can pick up. Use a, a stick onto it to hold it over a pan if you're cooking over a fire, um, or just, just to lift it off, uh, off the burner itself. But I've never needed to use a stick to lift this off the burner. The handle's always been cool enough uh, to lift off. But yeah, you can use that as with a large stick just to cook over an open fire. So other bits that's included inside of it. So you've got a small mess bottle and uh, obviously that's what your fuel is inside of there. And that's what I'm going to cook. So that's just a, that's just a homemade uh, macaroni cheese that's inside there. And then you've got the burner itself as well. And then I just always just keep a foldable uh, spork inside of it as well. So an added advantage with this piece of kit is that once you've got all of the kit inside, so you've got the mess burner and uh, the bottle of mess as well, these little plastic cooksers, uh, these are made by Wildo, I think. This is another um, Swedish company. And these are actually made to fit inside of, uh, of these kits as well. And then you've got the top pan that will sit over the top as well. And then it will all clip into that little clip on the side of the big pan. And then obviously sit inside of the... Uh, the windshield. So looking at the larger pot, so uh, obviously this has got a hanger on top of it, so you can hang this over an open fire, so you can heat your water over an open fire as well. You can actually use the smaller pan as a lid on this and sit it on the top section like this. So if you want to keep something warm in this, this sec, in the, the small pan, you can just keep that over the top of the, uh, the, the bigger pan. What I have done in the past with this is I've hung this over an open fire and then I've used the, the smaller section as the lid and I've put coals from the fire into the top of this and we've actually baked, uh, baked bread inside of it as well. So you can bake small items inside of it. And then of course you can always stick the lid back over the top as it's cooking as well. So a lot of people have asked why are there two indents? into uh, the handle of this thing. So obviously the first one is to hang the pot over an open fire and the second one is if you put that into the second one which is off center you can actually just clip the handle into this little piece of metal here and then that will hold this handle in place so that allows you to pour water out of this without this handle slipping. So these retail, I think they go for anything from around 25 to 50 pounds. Um, they are getting a little bit rarer now because people have sort of cottoned onto them and, and use them quite a, quite a fair bit. So they're not as, uh, as common as what they used to be. Uh, I think when I purchased mine, I think I purchased it for about 10 pounds if I remember rightly. So this unit's not really a light option. Uh, when you've got a full bottle of mess, you've got the burner inside of there, a spork and the cooks are inside, you're looking at about 1.3 kilos for this, so it's not a light option. Um, but like I said before, it is an absolute bulletproof piece of kit. Um, I've had this for about 15 years, I think, and you know nothing's ever gone wrong with it. It's just a basic cook set um, that is quite versatile in the fact that you can use it to, uh, to cook off the mess, you can build the fire inside of it, you can hang it over an open fire. It's just a really, really useful um, cook kit. So definitely recommend this. I am um, carrying my coffee and my sugar in these, uh, in these old snooze tins. Uh, I'll just get that ready there. So this little meal kit I've got here, so this is made in the vacuum packer. So we've just got some macaroni pasta there. And then inside I've just got some instant cheese sauce in there. So all I'm gonna do with this is just basically just boil up the pasta and then just reduce the water right down to about 50 mil, I think it is. And, um, and then add the cheese sauce inside of it. Get this pasta in, I think. That's on the boil now.
These cooksers are a good size, these are really. Um, obviously, you know, if you're making soups up and cup of soups and that sort of thing, you've got a good size there as well. Um, I've used those to, you know, to eat out of, put pancakes and stuff inside of them. So you can use it as a drinking vessel and, a, and an eating vessel, really. Um, and I've just made this little leather strap there, really, so that can just clip onto my belt, really. So yeah, they're great little things, these are. And the added advantage is that they fit into the kit itself. down, take that off. Now, a lot of people use the caps of the actual MIFS burner to, to, uh, to snub out the flame. But the only issue you've got is you've got a rubber, a rubber uh, seal o-ring inside of here so that if there is uh, fuel inside of it, it's not going to leak out while it's inside of the, um, inside of the panel set up or packed away. Um, obviously, if you stick that over the flame, that's going to that's gonna damage the rubber seal. So what I use, you've got two methods really. You can either just let it go out, but if you want to save fuel, um, I use the, the metal tin lid off the, uh, the snooze tin and just put that over. Wait, go away. We're not having any until I've finished, especially after you just ate that head of a deer. Dirty animal, aren't you? So guys, uh, that's basically it for today's video. Thanks for watching. Uh, just a short video this week. Just wanted to get out and try these boots by Lund Hags. Uh, really, really impressed with them, but you should be for about 300 quid for a pair of boots. Uh, just wanted to show you the Swedish army stove as well. Um, so yeah, so that's basically it. So uh, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please hit the subscribe button just here as well. There's a couple of videos if you fancy taking a look at those. Any comments, any feedback, stick it in the comment section below. And uh, we'll see you out on the next one.